Joyce Cinderella Irving of Climax is up next. Let's talk. <laughs> What's up, everybody out there? How you doing? Thank you guys so much for tuning in over here. And let's just jump right into it, shall we? Talking about Joyce Venerella Irby of Climax. She has a book out entitled I Still Say Yes. And, well, I'm almost finished reading it, but there were some things that came up that I was like, you know what? I think I want to post a video real quick and talk about these, uh, what she was mentioning in the book. It has a lot to do with the uh, last video and some of the questions that I was answering. But anywho, long story short, here is the book, I Still Say Yes by Joyce Venerella Irby. You can get your copy of the book over at Amazon. That's where I got my copy from. I'm not sure if it is available, you know, uh, through other outlets. I'm not quite sure. Please feel free to check out places such as Barnes and Noble and so on and so forth. But I'm not quite sure. So I got my copy at Amazon. So please pick it up. Well, excuse me, order it. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure you'll be very pleased with it. If, in fact, you do want to know more about the latest of Climax as it relates to Joyce Fenerella Irby's accounts. OK. All right. Now, before I do that, I want to also talk about uh, the next R&B diva we will be discussing for this month. Someone left a, a comment under a, one of my uh, videos. It said that I should read a copy of this, uh, uh, get a copy of this R&B diva's book. I didn't even know she had a book out. I did a, 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 a video on um, Jill Scott, Mary J. Blige, Jaguar Wright, and Faith Evans. And, you know, someone said, hey, check out Faith Evans' book. She has a book out. I was like, what? So, anywho, I got it in the mail the other day. Yes, I have it in the mail. Got it in the mail. Joyce Fenerella, Ur excuse me. Talk about Joyce Fenerella Irby. Uh, Faith Evans' book, excuse me. Uh, Keep the Faith. I will be reading it this month. We will be talking about it over here. Yes, I'm still in the process of trying to figure out how I want to do my book club. I want to start a book club. All right. And I will tell you more about, you know, what I want to do with it, but I'm not going to say anything just yet. You know, so again, this is the book that I'm reading this month. So if you want to just read along with me, go out and purchase the book. I got this book also um, on uh, Amazon. It came out in 2009. All right. So, hey, let's take a look at it. If you, you know, let's, let's talk. But let's get right on into uh, Joyce Fenderella Irby's book, okay? I'm wrapping it up. Now, the last video I did with uh, Joyce Fenderella Irby, I, um, I'm trying to think, you guys. I was talking about her split uh, that occurred between her and Dallas Austin. Yes, that Dallas Austin, the Dallas Austin. Uh, we know him from producing uh, hit records for um, TLC, and boys to men and a whole lot of other people, of course. So anyway, that has that, that split has occurred. <laughs> OK, uh, Joyce ended up having to sue, get the book so you can find out, you know, exactly what, you know, how much she got. I say she didn't get enough. You know, I would <laughs> talk more about that. But I will say I was presently surprised about the fact that she didn't get as much as she did because. Now, this came out of Dallas Austin's mouth in, in an interview. You can go check this out. I remember him saying this. And I never knew exactly, you know, why, what was the reason between them splitting up, you know, their um, artists and management um, contract. 
But now, according to Dallas over there, he did say in the interview that he did not want to work with uh, Joyce anymore. He just said, hey, I don't want to work with you anymore. And he said that he didn't know how much money that, you know, they had for him or how much he made because they put the money in escrow. OK, so when Joyce threatened to sue, you know, Motown, Biv 10, L.A. Reid, all of them, whoever, all, all the people over there, you know, that was involved. It ended up being that she threatened to sue. And I think as a result of that, they put the money in escrow, you know, so it is what it is. So we're going to move right along from that. But she has some things to say about a couple of people. You know, she kind of reading people to filth over here, you know, in this part of uh, her book, uh, chapter uh, 12. I'm in chapter 12, so let me kind of post this up so you guys can kind of see, get a feel for it. I'm not reading the entire thing, you know, just a little bit, pieces that I found kind of interesting. So at this moment in time, what Joyce has done, she has now decided to get back into the groove of things as far as um, managing artists. Again, she's found some artists, some uh, talented young men, Sammy Lloyd, in tune. Uh, she got a lot of talented individuals over there. And the only thing that I have a question about is how did Dallas Austin and Gerald Busby know that she had these artists signed? I'm pretty sure as big as we think the industry is, it's very small, you know, so word of mouth travel very quickly, probably in the music industry. But what I don't understand is that why is it that Dallas and Gerald would reach out to her again like that if they did her so tacky? You know, what's that all about? I would have said no. Matter of fact, I wouldn't even answer the phone. Oh, gosh. But anyway, let's talk. So she's talking about Sammy here. Yes, the Sammy. I think Lloyd is the one that was in the uh, verses with Ray J and all of them, right? It wasn't Sammy. It was Lloyd. So she's also involved in that uh, uh, gentleman's career as well. I love Sammy. From the moment I saw his little sheriff face, when I asked him to sing for me, he sang my Sharia more. He loved Stevie Wonder. I realized by our second conversation that Sammy was an old soul in a little angel's body. He, it was clear to me that he was born to use his voice. Now I had a preteen supergroup because I could add Sammy to in tune. But fate must have had something different planned for Sammy. I can't even imagine why, after all this time, Dallas would want to have a conversation with me about anything, a conversation with my non-producing, unworthy of being respected, animal-feeding self. <laughs> oh, yeah, somebody gave him a label, and he needed a unique artist like Sammy. How did you, how, why reach out to her? Why reach out to her? You couldn't, I'm just saying, like if it, if you didn't want to work with her, then why reach back out to her? You know, I was about to say, you know, something, but I'm going to keep it to myself. I never thought Dallas could pick artists, executives, or run a label, but his skill for writing and producing was incredible enough. When you make hit records, people just throw money at you, at you, even if it ends up being flushed down the toilet. <laughs> there is a false perception that if you can produce great records, you can manage a label, pick great artists, etc. But it's just not true. Sure, great athletes retire and some want to become coaches and executives for teams. But it's hard to be great at everything. Though a few are successful switching heads, if anything, most producers' egos are so big, they figure they can make any marginally talented person a star. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. You remember what I said in my last video, if you um, saw when I made mention that someone like an L.A. Reid and a Babyface could probably sign an artist sight unseen to a record company. It's just the fact that, hey, you know, it's L.A. Reid and Babyface, so... Who cares? We don't have to see the talent, you know, see the artist. We just know that this is going to probably be beneficial for everyone involved. So let's go ahead on and sign them. You see what I'm saying? And even if they do raise an eyebrow like, OK, I wonder what this is. At the end of the day, you know, the expectations is a huge payday unless you just want to, you know, cut your nose to spite your face and not really and put any effort into promoting the artist. You know what I'm saying? 
That's interesting. Anyway, I think it's thinking something in my head. I want to think it out loud. So that's pretty much is what's happening, right? So he didn't reach out to her again after all of this. I don't know. That's according to her. We don't know Dallas, you know, take on this. We don't know. That's why it's alleged. It's her thoughts, not mine. The part of me that loves Sammy and was responsible for his career was thinking rationally. It'd be great for Dallas to produce him. Capital Records could prove that their investment into Dallas Free World Label was more than just the sucking sound of millions of dollars going down the drain. <laughs> I decided I'd temper my, temper my what? Temper my uh, opinions and reactions to Dave and Dallas and do whatever I had to do to get Sammy over the hump. You know what? Every now and then I would have just told the artist. I would have just said, hey, I don't think this is going to work out between, you know, you and, and, and you know, uh, Dallas. Like, I, I'm no, we, we can find more producers. You know, I understand Dallas is hot. But hey, if I've been burned in the past, like, no, I'll pass on it. That's just would have been me. You know, I know a lot of people would have said, oh, let bygones be bygones, be mature, you know, and, 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 and don't hold grudges. It's not about holding grudges. I just wouldn't have done it. That's just me. But it is what it is. All right. I feel like Dave did his best to respect me, and I appreciate that. So a peace treaty was born between the parties for the purposes of facilitating Sammy's career. I also introduced Dallas to Lloyd and in tune because I felt like they should get some benefit from me bringing Sammy to Dallas. Plus, Sammy and Lloyd were really close. See... I understand, but it's kind of like you're putting all your eggs in one basket. I can see if you decided to allow Sammy to go over to uh, Dallas, but I wouldn't gave Gerald nothing. You know, I would, I mean, you to put the back into the lion's den again, and you got all your cubs with you? No. And like I said, it's, 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 it's I still, say, I, don't, I don't know, child. I just, I just don't know. I just would have said no. I, I, I just would have said no. I mean, they're not the only producers out there. <coughs> and that's what I'm saying. I was living day to day, trying not to let my wounds define me. And Jerry decided to throw me a bone and offer me a deal for Intune on DreamWorks. he just taken over the label, which was the envy of all things at the time. Mm. Every artist wanted to be on DreamWorks because of the possibilities for film in the high profile founders, including... Steven Spielberg. On paper, nothing really looked better than this. So try not to be so emotional. We did to deal with DreamWorks. And for the record, there was absolutely no involvement between Gerald and me except in tune business. What she's referencing here is the fact that when uh, Gerald approached her about doing a solo deal before she was kicked out of Climax, you know, he was moved going over to Motown Records. And so he said, hey, you know, I, you know, sign your solo, you know, give your solo deal. But I don't think it would be wise for you to leave Climax. So anyway, that relationship at the time was more like, what are we doing? Is it this or is it that? You understand what that, that meant, right? So that's what she's referencing. It was just all in tune business. I had same assigned to Capital Records through Dallas Company. And Lord and Intune signed to DreamWorks through Diva One. So she's definitely, you know, getting some things done, opening up some doors for some people. You know, she's she's back in the groove, you know. She, she's doing what she knows she does best. And everybody was recording. I was working on songs with Jasper Cameron, formerly of my Warner Group, Pure Bliss. For Intune and for Sammy. Dallas and I will be the executive producers of Sammy's record. When Dallas saw the credits, he instructed Dave to remove my name as executive producer, but would allow my credit to read as co executive producer. Why was this still happening? But to Dallas' dismay, my name would not be subjugated under his, since Capitol Records chose to proceed according to our written contract. How unusual. Gerald and I were the executive producers of Intune's album. 
See what I mean? See, already the underhandedness. You know, what I don't understand when it comes to these contracts, especially in um, when it comes to uh, recording, when things like this comes up, why is it that people just don't say, what does the contract say? And if, if that's what the contract says, then, you know, go ahead on and just say, hey, that's what the contract says. Like, is there any ethics involved at all? You know, like to me, I don't know, maybe other businesses are not as cutthroat, but for me, just getting a good sense of, you know, the music industry, it seems like to me, contracts are nothing. You know, at the end of the day, all contracts do is it probably protects you, if you will, at the end of, if you have to go to court. And then sometimes that doesn't always work out in the artist's best interest, because even if you do go to court and push the issue, it's almost as if the artist's career is pretty much there just floating out to nowhere. You know, because now, you know, you can be blackballed in a business. The executives can say, oh, well, you know, don't work with that person because that person is difficult, so on and so forth. With everybody having the understanding is is that the, you know, the producer or the executive is the one, you know, that, that pretty much made things difficult. I just don't get it. I just don't get it at all. It just seems as if contracts in the music industry you know, are there to be broken. It's just, I just don't understand. See, that's why I'm saying, I, I don't know. I would rather have dealt with this with someone new than to deal with this from someone I know who's done me like this before. You know, I would have. I would just would have said, okay, uh, 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 same situation, different person. I'd be okay with that. But to go through that with the same person again, I would have been like, no, uh-uh. You you ain't the only producer of record company. Mm-mm. Can't do it. Dallas really liked Lord, and he decided to be charitable. He produced two songs on Intune's album for $120,000. I met super producer Tricky Stewart, name sounds familiar to me, via Gerald while recording in tune. I was excited after we met and I heard his music. This was before Beyonce's single lady, Rihanna's Umbrella, Justin Bieber's Baby and more. But you know, I have a sense about these types of things. Tricky's demeanor was chill. He had a reason to be a tremendous egomaniac. Even then, and maybe he was, but he didn't act that way with us. Tricky did Intune's first single, a song called Ready. He cut the track. I recorded the boys' vocals, and then Tricky mixed the record. Some producers feel vocals don't matter. This can be obvious. Just by listening to some of the ratchet sounding stuff on the radio today, I agree with you on that. I feel vocals do matter. Production is not just the music. It's everything. Otherwise, it'll be an instrumental. I asked Trick if he considered giving me a co-producer credit beneath his since I cut the vocals. He had no problem with it. Wow. Thank you, Tricky. Now, on the other hand, when I cut vocals on Dallas, on something Dallas did, I was shown a credit that said additional vocals by George Irving. What does that mean? I wasn't singing. I just told them to keep my name off of it. Ultimately, I ended up getting an engineering credit that I didn't ask for, but I did. But I did do some engineering too. Petty. Mm, all right. So now, what we have here is that Sammy and Intune. They are definitely recording. They're about to get everything up and running and started. Okay, you guys. And <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> let's just say it's about to get interesting when it comes to in tune. And as she was saying, uh, telling this story, I thought about Michael Jackson, not Michael Jackson, but a new edition. I'm sorry. I thought about new edition because there's an episode that there's a scene in the new edition movie when all of the mothers were at the home of one of them. It could have been um, 
What's his name? It could have been Ralph. It could have been at Ralph's house. I'm not quite sure. But all the mother was, you know, pretty much in the room and they was getting ready to kick Bobby Brown out the group. <laughs> you know, and everything. And then there was, no, there was wondering where all the money was with the manager and all of that stuff. So this kind of reminded me of that scene that was going on with the guys at the time. Hold on, you guys. I'm just trying to make sure. The mother's... Okay. We'll, we'll go from here. Sorry about that. I'm just trying to make sure I don't want to read all of this. There was tremendous conflicts building within Intune. Chucky, Lord's younger brother, was not allowed... was not welcomed by the others. From the start, I could see doom on the horizon. At one point, there was a fight going on between the boys, and one of them said to Chucky, I'm going to beat the yellow off of you and make you black. Chucky was much smaller, and I was horrified. One of the mothers expressed her continued displeasure with Chucky being in the group because he liked football more than music. True, but it was my decision to have him in the group, and I had my reasons. It got worse when my sh uh, when we shot our first video to Tricky song, Ready. Lord sang most of the lead and had more face time than the other bro boys. The mothers counted every scene in the video and wrote down how many times each of their sons were in a shot compared to Lloyd. <laughs> then they confronted me with their findings. Oh, brother. I tried to explain that the director and the record company did what they thought was best for the video. I had nothing to do with the editing, but I did agree with the shot selection while having empathy for the other parents. Hmm. <laughs> Baby. After all of the bickering and negative uh, negativity going, and uh, excuse me, all of the bickering and negativity got to be too much and too soon. Before the record was released, they couldn't see beyond a fear that their child might get a raw deal, nor could they appreciate the deal that they did have. I understood their insecurity as parents, but I didn't expect them to sink the ship before we could leave, before we could even leave the dock. Then there was an incident that would cause major damage. The kids were involved in marvelous enterprises under the supervision of Marvin L. McIntyre, the self-proclaimed ambassador of artist development. Marvin had experience in music business as a road manager, among other things, and had a popular artist development camp. He had professional tutoring kids in a variety, professionals tutoring kids in a variety of things like media awareness and vocal and dance coaching and choreography with Derek Drock, Lynn, and Mr. James. I felt comfortable with the Marvin and his wife watching over the boys in their facilities. So anyway, what ended up happening was is that Joyce had to have surgery. So she left them, left the boys with uh with them okay and then <laughs> all he double hockey sticks breaks loose so maybe three days out of the hospital i was lying in bed and got a phone call from robin she was crying and welling into the phone saying that marvin staged a coup with the other parents and kicked chucky out of the group robin was insult insoluble and my heart was racing I was only half conscious, fumbling with the phone while trying to hold it steadily against my ear, assuring her I could take, I would take care of it. I was so hurt by the pain in her voice. My fight or flight response kicked in, kicked in, and I tried to stand as, uh, I tried to stand and clear my head. Then I hit the floor with a boom. I honestly don't remember what happened after that. So Marvin with his good meddling A double S. Probably had a lot more plans, but he didn't get a chance to rupture any more of my stitches with this, with his slittering Michael Bevins behavior. All right. They used to work together. I remember 
Chucky said to me with a cute list, Miss Joyce, don't hate, congratulate. I could go on and on, but I won't. It would be a disservice to the story if I didn't mention one final tripped out incident. We were all having a business conversation, the parents and me, talking about the plans for the group. One of the mothers stood up, leaned forward with her fingers crossed in my face and said to me, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Okay, then that, 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 that's all folks. You know, whew, this is a lot. <laughs> this is, this is, this is, this is a lot. This is too much. It's just too much. It's just way too much. I still go back to her working with them. But again, I'm not quite sure how it all ends because, you know, I got just a tad bit more to read. Okay, just a tad bit more to read. But I don't know. Tell me your thoughts. Do you think that she should have worked with these guys again? I say no. But, you know, the industry is pretty small. So chances are of you working with people like this or crossing paths with people who have kind of burned you, if you will, you know, it's going to happen. You know, I, I just don't know. I don't know. I I, I I just really, truly don't know. I think she could have had an opportunity somewhere else. But anyway, that's just how I feel. I just want to talk about Jules Fenerelle Herb in this book, you know. And again, thank you guys so much out there for, you know, watching over here. I appreciate you guys. And don't forget... To put your behind where your heart desires to be. And whenever I leave my mother's presence, she always says to me, baby, remember, I love you, but God loves you best. I love you guys out there. Take care of yourselves. And I look forward to seeing you next video. All right.